Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Take things for granted, and they will be taken from you. Anybody who has ever left a packet of chocolate hobnobs unguarded <laughs> will vouch for the truth in that statement. <laughs> so often, the things we love the most, we care for the least. Even love itself, as we shall see, is like a regular intake of dietary fibre. <laughs> Easy to ignore, but just try functioning properly without it. <laughs> That is agreed. Due to budgetary limitations, our mounted display for the Gasforth show will consist of two bicycles and a set of coconut shells. <laughs> the dog team will consist of one dog. Well, it's not really a team, is it, Raymond? One dog. I mean, the whole point is dogs acting in unison. You can't have one dog acting in unison, can you? I mean, that's stupid. <laughs> Unless... We use some kind of mirror. <laughs> well, at least with only one dog, we will avoid last year's disaster. Oh, yes. Shep and Lady. Indeed, Shep. And indeed, Lady. I've never known such naughty dogs. <laughs> it was like a scene out of Canine Emmanuel. <laughs> the locker room audit, sir. Oh. We are still getting through an awful lot of loo paper. I'm afraid the three sheets of visit policy clash badly with prunes and custard day in the county. No, Piper. I am a trained police officer, honed and buffed. I should not have to spend my time worrying about budgets. Well, they take a lot of looking after, sir. Indeed they do, Gladstone. One moment they're swinging on their little swings, the next is claws up in the sawdust. I'm talking about budgets, Constable, not budgets. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Gladstone. That'll be all. Yes, sir. Oh. 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 What's happened to you, Pat? Look like you've been mugged. I have. Did you get a description? Yes. Purple tights, pink leg warmers, enormous hair, a maniacal grin like she swallowed a coat hanger. <laughs> Looks like the love child of Jack Nicholson and a cabbage patch doll. <laughs> it shouldn't be too difficult to spot. Any weapon? Yes, a vicious cassette of Sonia's greatest hit. <laughs> My aerobics instructor, Maggie. Satan's hell cow, the bottle blonde bitch. <laughs> Step to the side, you're looking good. Shake it to the right. One, two, put your foot in your ear. Three, four, stick your head up your bum. Five, six, <laughs> on your back, hips up, knees spread. Sounds like a smear test. Yes, <laughs> only slightly less fun. <laughs> Difficult times, Derek, difficult times. Are you sure there are no more savings to be made in CID? I mean, this water cooler you've ordered. Raymond, do not interfere with my decisions. I, and me alone, am responsible for the operational fitness of my officers. It is my arse, and I will not have you sticking your nose in and sniffing about. <laughs> A water cooler. We work under intensely difficult conditions and regular rehydration is essential. Rubbish. You just want to strut about with a paper cup in your hand like American policemen. <laughs> you watch far too much television. The one saving grace was that I wasn't the worst person in the class. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think I've dislocated my trouser furniture. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Look at Kevin. That leotard's a bit radical, isn't it? <laughs> if it gets sucked up any further, it'll go right your bum. <laughs> Gotta feel the burn. Oh. <laughs> Set fire to your leg warmers. <laughs> Gotta keep in shape. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got to keep in shape for? Well, I do confess it is partly vanity. But what I say is this. If you've got it, Get it out, pump it up and flaunt it. <laughs> I have to be very fit for my police work. <laughs> Do 
you know. I was chasing this bloke the other day, knackered, I was a wobbly jelly. <laughs> Nearly had to stop and be sick. How far did you run after him? Oh, I wasn't running, I was in a squad car. <laughs> it's just that I'm used to power steering. <laughs> well, I think you're both mad. You could have had another hour in bed. No pain, no gain, Maggie. I want to get in shape. What are you talking about? You're in great shape. Just because society decrees that all women should look like stick insects with knockers, don't you think you're just perpetuating a sexist stereotype? Well, that's the idea, but it's going to take a lot of work. You can say it's perpetuating a stereotype if you like, Maggie, but it's just what people find attractive. I mean, look at beauty contests. Beauty contests are just a disgusting male fantasy. No, they're not. My fantasies are a lot more disgusting than that. <laughs> beauty contests are tasteful. Tasteful? Forty birds standing in a row with their boobs full of silicon and their bikini bits waxed down to five curly short of a Kojak. <laughs> How tasteful is that? It takes a lot of hard work and dedication to win a beauty contest. You have to respect that. A person earns respect. And quite frankly, I don't think that having humongous kajungas is a sufficient qualification. It'll do for me. <laughs> Good. So that concludes our weekly administrative meeting. Weekly fannying about meeting, more like. <laughs> Except, of course, to remind you that the date for this year's promotion review board has been set for this Friday. I don't need reminding, mate. I've been building up to this for weeks. I am a coiled spring waiting to go... boing. <laughs> yes, well, I must say, promotion would be nice. Chief Inspector Raymond Fowler. I can't help feeling that this year it must be my turn. Well, you've got no chance, mate. There's no point you even turning up. I beg your pardon? Promotion boards are looking for solid, steady, dependable blokes, Fowler. Well, married blokes. Not divorcees living in sin with their sergeants. I don't believe a person's marital status makes the slightest difference these days. Of course it does. Blimey, society has to offer some sort of reward for a lifetime spent in front of the telly. <laughs> Do you know, tomorrow is me and my Tina's 20th anniversary. Really? <sighs> and you can rest assured I shall let the promotion board know. <laughs> 20 years, mate. 20 gruelling years. <laughs> That shows character, Raymond. Character and commitment. And you really believe that being married affects one's chance of promotion? Of course it does. Mind you, marriage is much more than that. It's comfort. It's security. I cannot tell you the peace of mind which me and my Tina enjoy knowing that things are as bad as they're ever going to get. <laughs> say that modelling isn't as easy as you think, Maggie. There's a price to pay. Bulimia is a real tragedy. Exactly. That's the point. Women torturing their own bodies to conform to a male fantasy. Young girls throwing up their dinner. Personally, I've never been able to see what the problem with all that bulimic stuff is. To me, throwing up your dinner is the sign of a good night out. <laughs> it's no big deal. It just makes your beer taste a bit sour, that's all. You're just a total caveman, Gary. Yeah, well, I like to work out a bit, don't I? <laughs> Look at it. Beautiful. This is what being a policeman is all about. <laughs> hey, next we'll get one of them double hot plates with two coffee pots on it. <laughs> two coffee pots? A cop with two pots? <laughs> Yo, brother! Freeze, mother. Drop it! Auntie! <laughs> Just once before we die, I'd like us to take our jackets off together and be wearing shoulder holsters. <laughs> One step at a time, we've got our water cooler. The Virgin Cup. Boy, I can't get any water out of this thing. I know, it don't work. I called the <laughs> Now then, Habib, I want your advice about an extremely sensitive area. Quite frankly, it's been bothering me for some time, and I just don't want to sit on it any longer. 
Oh, I see, sir. Well, my dad uses this greasy cream called rectinol. <laughs> but sometimes he still has to have a special cushion. I beg your pardon? Hemorrhoid, sir. Bothering your sensitive area. I'm not talking about hemorrhoids, you silly young constable. Sorry, sir. Rectinol, you say. <laughs> Now then, as I was saying, this sensitive matter. <coughs> <laughs> if a man were considering proposing marriage to a woman, and, and I am, of course, talking about a hypothetical man and an equally hypothetical woman. Not going to be much of a sex life, is it? <laughs> it isn't anyway. But uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> hypothetically, hypothetically speaking. <laughs> However, Howsoever that may be, <clears throat> how do you think this hypothetical woman would wish to be approached? Well, personally, I think marriage is an outmoded institution. But all women like a bit of romance, you know, candles, flowers, nice meal. Then when you're all lovey-dovey, you go down on one knee and suggest an AIDS test. <laughs> AIDS test? Of course, sir. That's how it's done these days. Well, think about it, hypothetically speaking. If I accept your proposal, I could catch HIV, herpes, gonorrhea. Uh, uh, <laughs> ah, Patricia, um, we were just discussing catching that notorious Argentinian Jew thief, uh, Hugo Ignatieff Vincente. Herpeth gonorrhea. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you might have read about him in the police review. Uh, was it the May issue? Uh, uh, Raymond, what were you proposing to Constable Habib? Uh, Nothing, Sergeant. We were just discussing Inspector Grimm's 20th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Seeing how much marriage proposals have changed. These days, the bloke has to bring along a medical certificate. Mm. I think women prefer candles, flowers, and wine. <laughs> Twenty years. <laughs> Twenty years, poor old Tina Grimm has had to put up with her appalling husband. Can you imagine what it must be like year after year with the same dull, irritating old bore? Yes. <laughs> Not, that Not that marriage isn't a fine and honourable estate. I mustn't let Grimm's example sour me to the entire institution, nor indeed the failure of my own marriage. I was young, I was wild. She was pregnant. <laughs> yes, I have to confess that my knowledge of the rhythm method of contraception was rather incomplete. <laughs> well, you've certainly mastered it now. Just add up all the days of the month and then don't do it on any of them. <laughs> Constable, would you mind accompanying me to the CID area? <laughs> I'd offer you some refreshment, but sadly I have a dysfunctional spell. <laughs> I'd like to ask your advice on a matter pertaining to <clears throat> women. What with you being one and all? Right, you are, sir. It's just my Tina is expecting something special and exciting from me, and I've got a problem. It comes once a year. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I can see that would be a problem. But don't worry, sir. Impotence is very common in men of your age. I read in Cosmopolitan that there's this cream you can buy called Keep It Up. And you I'm not talking about <laughs> impotence, Constable. Oh, sorry, sir. Keep it up. <laughs> now, the problem is, as I think you know, tomorrow is me and my Tina's 20th wedding anniversary, so I suppose I've got to get her something. Well, it would be nice, sir. It's extraordinary how much meaningless, empty gestures mean to a woman, isn't it? Well... Some girls like them. The question is, what shall I get? Well, haven't you any ideas at all? 
Oh, no, quite the opposite. Too many ideas. I'm torn. I'm torn between a box, a milk tray, <laughs> and a box, a dairy box. <laughs> she likes the lime barrel out of one and the caramel cup out of the other. <laughs> what do you think? Perhaps you'll get a both. Both? <laughs> you see, bloody women, totally unreasonable, the lot of you. <laughs> Marriage is in the air at the moment. Do you know? <laughs> I think Inspector Fowler's thinking about proposing to Sergeant Dawkins. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I love a wedding. <laughs> Except for the bit where the vicar says, does anyone have any objections? Makes me so tense. <laughs> I always think, God, I hope I don't say something. God. <laughs> because you easily could, couldn't you? <laughs> you know, if you suddenly went mad or something. You know, I did object at a wedding once. <gasps> you did. Oh, yes. I said the groom is a drinker and a philanderer. Oh, no! <laughs> what did the groom say? I just told you. <laughs> it was the only way at the time I could think of getting out of it. Well, now, Patricia, I hope you enjoyed your lasagna parmigiano verdi con fungi. Yes, Raymond, ever so. Good. It took some preparation, I can tell you. I bet it did. For a while there, I didn't think I was ever going to get it out of the packet. <laughs> I mean, look, to open, simply cut a long dotted line and pull tab outwards. I mean, it's just not true. That won't get you anywhere. They might as well say to open, wrap in a copy of the Beano and brush your teeth with it. <laughs> I mean, why does it have to be hermetically sealed? It's a frozen meal, not a gold ingot. <laughs> I suppose it wasn't delivered in a securical van. To open, bludgeon guards to death, run oxyacetylene, <laughs> torch along dotted line and dynamite were shown. <laughs> Raymond, we're having a lovely evening. You made a super supper. Please don't spoil it. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, darling. Some more wine? Ooh. Well, I shouldn't. Oh, in that case, I'll just recork it with my vacuum pump. <laughs> We're going to have it with our spam fritters on Sunday. No, no. On second thoughts, perhaps just a little drop. Right. <laughs> I shall have to be careful. Red wine and Italian food turns me into a right goer. Well, I'm delighted to hear it. Are you, Raymond? Absolutely. Active bowel, active mind. I... <laughs> Raymond, what's all this in aid of? The candles, the flowers, the wine? Oh, this? Oh, oh, you know, um, well, um, well, uh, <coughs> well, you know how much I admire you, Patricia, not only as a police sergeant, but also as a, um, as a, uh, <coughs> as a woman. <laughs> oh, Raymond. Patricia. Oh, Raymond, is there something you want to say to me? Yes. Yes, there is. Um, I want to discuss our future together. Oh. We're, we're both pretty set in our ways now. I'm a bit of an old stick in the mud, and, and you're certainly not getting any younger, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, I don't want to end up boring, grey, flabby and all alone. I want to be boring, grey and flabby with you. <laughs> I'm sure you feel the same way. Particularly now you're beginning to lose your looks a bit. Really? Oh, definitely. Mm. <laughs> Besides which, I'm mindful of the approaching promotion review board. My home life needs to appear solid, plain and simple. And they don't come much more solid, plain and simple than you, old <laughs> So what I'm saying is, how about it? Let's get married. No. In fact, I'm leaving you. Good, good. I thought a fairly simple ceremony, you know, just you, me and a bottle of Sainsbury's sparkling. 
And perhaps a honeymoon looking at some medieval churches in Lincolnshire. Now, I expect you're looking forward to a bit of roly-poly. <laughs> Patricia? So she turned you down like an old duvet. <laughs> I was so sure of my ground. It must have been something to do with the way I proposed. Well, it can't have been any worse than when I did it, sir. I had ten bottles of Guinness to get my courage up. Did you go down on one knee? I went down on all fours. <laughs> How could I have got it so wrong? Oh, I'm sure you made a very nice proposal, sir. Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Wine, candles, cost me a pretty penny, I can tell you. But there's no pleasing some women. Any woman, sir. And I was making a very attractive offer, I can assure you. It wasn't just my cuisine I dangled in front of her. <laughs> oh, no? <laughs> what else did you dangle? <laughs> my prospects at dinner. <laughs> my mum won't even let me put my elbows on the table. <laughs> the promotion review board are coming tomorrow. She could have been married to a chief inspector, but oh, no. Well, it's her loss. I shall get that promotion anyway, become enormously successful, and she'll wonder why she ever let me go. I expect it'll be all your annoying little habits that put her off. I beg your pardon? Well, that's what normally spits people up. Annoying habits. Like picking your nose and then staring at it. You do that. <laughs> oh, I do not, you foul boy. How about blowing off under the sheets and going, blimey, nobody smoke? <laughs> Be quiet, Goody. Well, you certainly slurp your tea because that gets on everyone's nerves. <laughs> Women! Can't flip in, please them, no matter what you do. I bought her a 250 gram box of milk tray. <laughs> she only says she wants champagne. God, I managed to get it to settle for a bottle of Asti, but it still meant getting in the car. Well, I reckon the problem is you're both too nice. Birds don't appreciate it. Treat them mean, keep them keen. Walk away. Ta-ta, babes, it's been fun, but your looks run out. There's plenty more nuggets in a family portion, and I've stuck my toothbrush in your mug for the last time. <laughs> and for those of us whose first language is English? Forget it all for a night. Get out on the pool. Meet some other girls for a change. Have a drink, a laugh. Well, I suppose it can't hurt. Well, I'm not going. You sad single blokes can fritter your lives away, but I am a steady family man leading a steady family life. Things which I can assure you I will be pointing out at the promotion review board tomorrow. It all happened so quickly, Maggie. I don't know what to do. Well, the way I see it is this is an opportunity for you to spread your wings, Pat. Feel the wind beneath them. Glory in the forgotten joy of spontaneity and adventure. You mean go out and bonk someone, don't you? Yeah. Oh, I couldn't do that. Well, at least have a laugh. You know, a bop, then a snog, then a curry, then a coffee. And if you suggest copulation, you just call a cab. <laughs> It wouldn't work, Maggie. I've never been any good at meeting blokes. I was the only girl at Hendon that had a packet of condoms that was past its have it off by date. <laughs> I'll pick you up at eight. <laughs> what are you lurking about for, Kevin? Oh, just waiting to give you a sneak peek at my great big packet. <laughs> I shall speak to your mother. Yes, well, do if you like, because I don't care, because she'll be pleased. Because... <laughs> An abominizer! <laughs> All I have to do is lie on this for a few minutes a day, and I'll look just like her. Him, 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 him. <laughs> oh, yes. In a week or two, when I'm an enormous, bulbous sex god, you won't be able to keep your hands off my lower lumbar. <laughs> so watch out, babes because there'll be a queue.
Well, well, hello. <laughs> you are a pretty little thing, aren't you? <laughs> well, don't be shy. You know, I've had my eye on you for some time. <laughs> How could I resist such a scrummy little honey bunny? Well, it's very kind of you to say so. Sir. What did Satan's lunchbox? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My heart belongs to Constable Habib. Goody, what are you doing lurking about, you foul boy? I wasn't, I wasn't lurking. I was just doing my exercises. Then you called me a scrummy honey bunny. I did not. I was talking to myself. Oh, well, nothing like a bit of self-confidence. <laughs> but I do know what you mean. <laughs> I often stand in front of the mirror and feel very sexy. <laughs> Sometimes in my underpants. You understand? <laughs> Lock up your daughters, Gasforth. We are on our way. Our lad's night out is sorted. Armani whistle, Osevage aftershave, 100 quid in fivers, plus a couple of pound coins for a packet of three assorted flavours. <laughs> While I have to warn you, if you're going to chew gum all evening, I shall thoroughly disapprove. Wait. Back of the queue, lads. Just having a drink, mate, all right? Sorry, officer. Should have clocked you. Just one moment, Constable Boyle. You're not on duty. You can't just go flashing your warrant card about. Oh, come on, sir. You've got to use your card on the pull, haven't you? It's a bird magnet. They love it. Power is an aphrodisiac. On the pull? What in the devil's trouser press do you mean? <laughs> well, sir, you're aware of our community policing policy as laid down in the police charter. I am to be open, courteous and approachable, and to always respond immediately to the needs of members of the public. Come then, officer. Are you going to buy me a drink then? It's a tough job, sir, but I know my duty. <laughs> Put that card away, Goody. <laughs> Look, I'm a policeman too. They all say that. Got a card? wrong with a little dance. How can I ask anyone to dance? It's too noisy to communicate. You don't have to talk to them. Just boogie up to them and do this. If they don't naff off, you're on for the full portion. <laughs> what? A nice little dance. Have a go. Keep it discreet. Gay nights chooses. <laughs> he thinks it's a private drink a little later, love. I've got a nice little room upstairs. I think you've pulled already, sir. <laughs> Let's go. I can't stay long, Maggie. I'm in a friend's flat while she's on holiday and I have to feed Toby, her stupid dog. Hat, stop making excuses. It's a night out. Have a drink. Dance with a bloke or two. <laughs> As if anyone would ask me. And I wouldn't know what to do if they did. Well, don't be over eager. Just be dead cool and classy. You know, sophisticated. Say something like, I'd rather bop with the bits I cut off my dog's bum. <laughs> Show me you're a strong, in control woman. Excuse me. Fancy a dance? Yeah, all right. <laughs> That one there might do for you, Kev. I used to know her. She's lovely. Only interested in one thing. 
No, I see. A bit boring, is she? <laughs> Do you think you could loosen your grip a bit, pal? I like to keep my knockers on the outside of my ribcage. <laughs> He's found you a right old slapper that even you could pull. <laughs> Hello, Sergeant Dawkins. Goodbye, Constable. Goodbye, Inspector. Who's Toby? <laughs> but you know the fun thing is, I feel great. Really great. Liberated. Patricia's building a new life with Toby, and I'm happy for her. Really happy. And did you see all those beautiful girls tonight? <laughs> Talk about plenty more fish in the sea. Whoa, hey! <laughs> oof, oof. No, I feel great. A toast. A toast to feeling great. Feeling great. <laughs> so you coming out on the Raz again tonight, Pat? No. I'm going to eat a bag of cream cakes, drink half a bottle of Baileys and watch telly. You miss Inspector Fowler a lot, don't you? Him? That dull, rude, boring, useless excuse of a man who'd rather read Biggles than Bonk. <laughs> of course I miss him. I love him. He looked so funny last night at the disco trying to be trendy. Oh, well, we both made our decisions. So come on out. Let your guard down. Let your hair down. Let your mother down. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't feel like it. Besides, I have to look after Toby. Honestly, it's been such a comfort having Toby around. He's really stopped me being lonely, especially at night. He just loves me for who I am, you see. And actually, even after only a couple of days, I think I love him. Mind you, I'm not saying he's not a handful. <laughs> he's so rough and physical. <laughs> <laughs> he just leaps at you, doesn't he? Yes, he does. I hardly have time to get my coat off before he's licking me all over. <laughs> oh, I know that sort of animal. Does he want to have his head in your lap all evening? <laughs> evening snuffling away <laughs> I try to say no Toby but he looks at me with those big beautiful soulful eyes his tongue hanging out mind you to be honest he can be a bit disgusting I mean when he sits in the middle of the carpet and licks his willy well <laughs> Medical emergency on the line. Potential fatality. Boyle, can you keep it down? I'm trying to get through to the water cooler repairs hotline. <laughs> Blimey, you are in a queue. All our operators are busy. And what would happen if we tried that, eh? 
Someone rings up dying. Sorry, all our officers are busy. Your emergency is in a queue and we will be doing nothing about it. <laughs> Imagine that. Hello? Hello? Hello! Oh, finally. Right, my water spout won't spurt. <laughs> No, next week is not good enough. I've got an extremely important promotions interview this afternoon. I'm going to look a right dicky doodah with a non-functioning faucet filtering facility, aren't I? <laughs> Thank you. Right, Boyle, she's going to give me instructions over the phone. Get this down. Take your water cooler, yeah. <laughs> and shove it up your... <laughs> right, I'll fix it myself. Oh, jealousy. Hmm. The green-eyed monster that has mock the meat it feeds on. You know, sir, when a man has stolen a woman, there's only one thing you can do. Fight for her. I mean, when my lady left me for another man, I went looking for him and I gave him fair warning. He left her alone after that. You threatened to fight him? No, I told him not to use a potty under her bed because that is where she kept her teeth. <laughs> well, I shall neither fight nor lie to win Patricia. She no longer loves me, and that is her right. She loves Toby. He gives her everything she needs, and as long as he looks after her and never hurts her, I have no quarrel with him. Thanks. Maggie, Maggie, Maggie. Was there any post for me? I'm very, very excited. I've ordered some weights and some dumbbells so I can iron my pump. Oh, right. I was wondering what this was. <sighs> Thanks. Anyway. Oh, come on, you were telling me about your new life. Oh, there's not much to tell, really. Well, how are you getting on with Toby? Well, the problem is he can be so rough. He doesn't know his own strength sometimes. He nearly knocks me over. But you're not worried he'd bite you? Well, I don't <laughs> think so. But if I'm late with his dinner, he snarls and growls and looks a bit threatening. Does he insist on sleeping with you every night, even though you don't want him to? Yes, he does. I say, no, Toby, get out of my bed. But before I know it, he's on top of me, all hot and panting and hairy, and I have to bite him off. Patricia, I can remain silent no longer. This Toby is an animal. Yes. If I cannot have you, then I should at least protect you from swine like him. Who is this Toby? I shall thrash the monster to within an inch of his life and hang the consequences. He's a prize-winning boxer. Well, I box a little myself, and I don't care. I love you, Patricia. I always will. And if I end up being beaten to death protecting you from this filthy pervert, then I will count my life cheap. Oh, Raymond. God, I love you. What about Toby? Toby's a dog. <laughs> yes. Oh, Raymond. He wanted to be so brave, so strong. Let's start all over. Rekindle our romance. Do all the things we never did. Yes. Let's start with a half of Mackerson at the Frog and Truncheon. Yes. And see how we go from there. Sir, you can't go out boozing now. The people from the promotion board will be here any minute. Oh, dear. Yes. No. Kindly inform them that I have more important matters to attend to. There's always next year. Come along, Patricia. Right, Boyle, this is it. New suit, new tie, very hoity, very toity. <laughs> Got Tina to iron me socks, even managed to fix me spout. They won't interview a smarter officer than me this week. Oh, yes. Very nice. Sir, the people from the promotion board are here. Right. This is it. Just refresh myself with a nice cup of ice cold water from the cooler. <laughs> and then I can't. I think you'll agree I look 
rather eye-catching. You certainly do, Inspector. Good luck. <laughs>